Okay, you've set your new telescope up and it looks something like this in this position. And now you say to yourself, how on earth do I use this thing? Well, that question answered and more coming right up. Welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. And in this video, we're going to be looking at one of these things, an equatorial mount and just how to get you started and uh, it's going to be a very basic guide, but a guide that's going to show you exactly how to use it and get the very best out of an equatorial mount. And trust me, once you learn how to use one of these things, you, you, don't, want to, you don't want to go back. So, first of all, let me just explain the reason why a telescope is mounted on a mount such as this. And it's just purely how the stars appear to move across the sky. Okay, the, 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 they appear to move in an arc shape like that, alright? And one of these type of telescopes will move in an arc shape across the sky to follow the stars. And it just makes tra uh, tracking the moon or a planet so much easier once you've got one of these things set up properly. Now, when you first set up your telescope and you try and move it up and down and left and right, it just seems really complicated. And that's because you're, used to, you're probably used to one of these type of mounts. Now, this is just called an Altaz mount, and that's just basically a, a um, fancy word for up, down, left and right, okay? Your, uh, your alt, okay, your altitude is your up and down, and your left and right is what is your as, which is your azimuth, okay? And like I say, it's just a fancy word for left and right, basically. Now, if stars moved across the sky like that, then one of these type of mounts would be perfect, because we'd be just going up, down, left, right sort of thing. But they don't, and like I say, they move in an arc. So, without further ado, let's get into uh, how you set up one of these uh, equatorial mounts. Now, if you look at the way my telescope is set up, you'll see that th this is called the uh, starting position or the neutral position. Um, and it's very rare that you actually use your telescope in this position, but it's uh, you'll be you'll always start off in this position when, we, when you take it outside, okay? I'll explain it all uh, in a short while, don't worry. So, the way to know you've got it right, okay, is look at your counterweight, and it should be at its lowest position, okay, pointing down towards the floor. So it shouldn't be uh, like this, like this, or anything, you know, make sure it's in its lowest position, pointing towards the floor, okay? And it'll form like a T-shape, that runs with your telescope tube. All right. Now you know you're in the right position. If you've got this far, there's not a lot left to do. Trust me. Now, if you um, look here, this is the, probably the most important dial on your telescope. All right. When it comes to setting up. Now, all this does is it will alter uh, the latitude. Now, your latitude is this here, this line here. Now, if you imagine, there's a hole drilled right way through that. Don't do that though, because <laughs> it will damage your scope, obviously. But imagine there's a hole drilled right way through that, and that will be pointing at the pole star. Now, the angle of the pole star varies uh, um, your latitude, you know, depending on where you live, uh, find where your local latitude is. Um, and set, set this. Now, the way you set this is you may have a locking uh, screw like this. Uh, don't forget as well, your, your adjustments and nuts and bolts may vary, they may look a little bit different, but basic equatorial mounts like this are pretty much all the same. Okay, so slacken off anything that may be locked, not up here, not these, these are just purely for uh, moving your telescope, okay, we're talking about the mount now. And set this roughly to what your local latitude is. If you've made sure that your tripod's level and you've uh, set up your latitude um, adjustment here, you're pretty much there. And the rest now is really we need a nice clear eye and take the scope out uh, to, to set it up properly or polar alignment. This is what you call rough polar alignment. And if you were now to take your telescope out in this position and point it with the counterweight pointing due north, 
you very you will be very roughly polar aligned, okay? But I'll just show you how to fine tune that when you go outside. The only other thing you've got to uh, make sure that is set up is your finder scope. Make sure that your finder scope is in uh, in sync with your telescope, and this is easily done. Just you, you're best off doing this in the daytime and find a static target over in the distance, a tree or something, and find it in your uh, in your eyepiece, and then check it with the finder scope. And you may need to just do some adjustments just to make sure that the, the, the target you're looking at is spotting the centre of the crosshairs. And if you've done all that, you're now ready to take your telescope outside. Okay, so now imagine that we're outside and the telescope is pointing due north. Okay, now it's a good, good idea at this point is, is to just turn your mount around by adjusting maybe uh, where it's fastened on the bottom, sometimes the fastened on the side. And just line the uh, actual mount of your counterweight, if you like, up with one of the legs. All right, and I'll, uh, it'll become clear later why that will really save you a lot of time when it comes to setting up your telescope again. Uh, and do remember that this is only a one-time setup. I mean, it sounds it's a lot to explain, really. It's longer to explain than it is actually taking your telescope up and just you know setting it up because virtually all of it's done already. So what we do now, so we're pointing due north, we make sure our tripod's level and we're pointing due north. Now we need to find Polaris. Now to find Polaris or Polaris, uh, however you want to pronounce it, um, it's really easy to find. Um, it, you, you find the uh, constellation Ursa Major, which is also known as the Big Dipper, the Great Bear, Frying Pan, there's, there's lots of names for it. It's a familiar constellation that looks something like that. And the bottom two stars, okay, will point virtually at the uh, North Star, okay? And it's about an Ursa Major constellation width away, if you get what I mean. And uh, once you've found uh, the Pole Star, get, uh, try and find it in your finder scope, okay? Now, the way we're going to find the Pole Star in our finder scope is we're going to alter um, so the actual azimuth, so if I just loosen that off, now this is on, on your mount itself, gosh that's gone tight, right there we go, okay, so now, and this is the only time we're ever going to be touching this, once we've done this, this is going to be locked off, okay, so make sure that the entire mount can just turn a little bit like that, okay, and now get the pole star in your finder, okay, and again, you're going to be doing it with these kind of adjustments, okay? Now, if you need to go up a little bit, this is where you're going to use your uh, altitude, sorry, your latitude setting. Remember when we, we did as latitude? Um, and just, and you can turn, there'll be a little screw here at the back that you can just fine tune it, okay? And with a combination of your up and down, left and right, Get Polaris spot on in your um, in your finder scope, and once you've got Polaris in your finder scope, which won't move because it only moves a tiny bit really, um, lock everything off. Okay, just just lock everything down, and make sure you're all ready. And you virtually that's it. You're set. You're done. Okay. So now it's all set up. We're polar aligned. We're the tripod level. Let's just talk a little bit how you actually manoeuvre the scope. With the telescope's pointing north, we're polar aligned, we've got our latitude set up correctly, and now we're all ready to observe. So, we want to observe the southern skies now, and our telescope's pointing north. Well, you know, what do you do? And the way I always, or when I first started to learn um, an equatorial mount is, when I was pointing north, I turned anti-clockwise to go south. Okay, so I'm turning anti-clockwise and I'm turning everything anti-clockwise. Can you see how the telescope's turning? Just like that, all right? And exactly the same appears for, we're the same for all horizons, okay? So you've got free um, scope of the entire sky. There's nowhere that this won't point to in this setup, okay? Now, once you, you round, like this, okay, say I'm uh, now looking at Jupiter over in the south, okay, the way you know that the telescope's wrong, all right, or 
or may be wrong, is if the counterweight is higher than the telescope, okay? If it starts going like this, all right, you know there's something wrong, all right? You never need, the counterweight wants to be level at, at most, okay? So, if we were following uh, a star across the sky, it would be like this, you see. You can see it's going across in an arc. And this is why, because we've set it up uh, to the right latitude of the pole star, and because all the stars move around the pole star, now we only have to adjust one um, uh, adjustment, which would be our right ascension, okay? And this is this one here. You've probably got like long antennae things. I've taken them off just for simplicity here. And this is the only one you'll have to use, okay? Once you've got that target in your field of view, you just have to move one and it will track it right across the night sky. Now you may have noticed also my focus is now pointing directly to the floor. Now, a lot of people like to put their uh, telescope with the focuser opposite the um, counterweight here, okay? And the theory behind that is wherever the scope is, you've always got access to the eyepiece. But you know, I don't really like that because such as like if, uh, this is kind of the, the, the height I have my, my um, tripod, and if the scope was up here and I was looking somewhere on the north, and it, and it was, you know, I'd still, I mean I'm 5'11", and I'd still struggle to get up there, okay? So I just take advantage of tube rings. If you've got tube rings, use them, okay? And just slacken them off a little bit. So we're now looking at the southern skies. And I'll just take that off, it'll be easier to turn. And now we can just turn and place the eyepiece where it needs to be. Now, can you remember earlier when I, I mentioned turning the mount head so it was actually uh, in line with one of the tripod legs? The reason why you do this is you're always going to take uh, an equatorial mount and point it north, okay? So, if at all possible, mark the ground where the tripod's going to be stood, okay? Uh, you can temporarily mark it if you like, but it's better if you can just permanently mark it. Do a secret mark, if you like, that nobody knows about, only you. So, every time you take your telescope out, the only thing you've got to do is point this leg. Oh yeah, sorry, just mark a little marking on the leg. One of the legs, like you can put a little sticker on there and put N if you like for north or whatever, but just identify that north. Leg. So, all you have to do now is like pl place the, uh, the leg at, at the north, place your tripod so it's in line, uh, sorry, your mount so it's in line with this leg, and that's half the battle done. Now that all that's left for you to do is just get your telescope out there on a nice clear night and start enjoying the night sky. Um, and the best way to learn how to use one of these things is to just get out there and start using it. Um, but these few little pointers that I've just shown you here, I'm sure you'll soon go, ah, I get it. It'll all click as soon as you start using one. But get your latitude right, point it north, you're on your way. I hope I've kept this simple enough for you. Like I say, it's not complicated and they really do help uh, once you do get used to it. Uh, so, in the meantime, enjoy your new telescope, enjoy these clear, longer nights we're having, and I will see you on the next one. Take care, bye bye.